All right, guys. Max doing very awesome. Little Mac, guys. Let's. As uh, you know, I got I got little Mac to like eleven million GSP. And uh, yeah, uh, I only have three characters in Elite, guys, and I'm having a uh, trouble getting like the fourth character because I choose. I just keep switching, guys. Like when I get to like ten, eleven mil GSP. But for all of Punch Out's strengths, but. But the good, the good part is, is that, you know, I, I have like 12, 12 point something. Uh, I think I can get my K rule in there because, you know, K rule is kind of a cracked character. Player expression and a breadth of options to deal with your opponents are not among them. Doesn't that look like Mario, bro? Like Mario's uncle or something. This brings us to Smash, where the main design philosophy of Mac the Underdog has endured much to the chagrin of his mains across the world. Did he say chagrin? Guys, I have never heard that vocabulary word. <laughs> it's no secret that Max struggles in ultimate, with most players placing him squarely in the bottom five of the roster. Necessary. Bottom five, well, wow. yeah, that recovery is just terrible. Guys, let me go grab my soda real quick. Literally, bottom five. Hey, but. It's not a terrible character. I mean, all the ter all the characters uh, can be uh, played well. You know what I mean? Like you can be, you can win a major if you really like. You know, put your heart out to it. Fairly, those who play Mac have to be creative in their approach to each matchup, looking for opportunities to strike wherever the opening arises. Ultimate. However, gives Little Mac the tools to play in terrifying and varied ways that not even Mike Tyson would have been prepared for. And I know, right? That KO punch, bro. <laughs> it's a good way to cheese. You can kill him at like 10-15%, man. <laughs> no two players show off Mac's wide array of options as much as the two best American Little Macs, Peanut and Alternus. And fan of. Nah, I'm kidding. <laughs> I wish I could be that good. The two have a lot in common. They're both young, smart, funny, fun to talk to guys who fell in love with Max's playstyle, but understand how he's limited as a character. Oh, and yeah, and he's limited, man. You hit him once off stage and he's done for. They're also both from MDVA, so they fight for the title of best MDVA Mac on what feels like a weekly basis. Don't know what MDVA is, guys. If you do, let me know in the comments below. They have a healthy and friendly rivalry that has resulted in some amazing head-to-head -head sets already, and they teach each other how to deal with max rough matchups and improve at a frankly astonishing pace. And while they do have many similarities, looks like he's got a YouTube channel as well. It says Peanut YT. Down to their alt of choice, their playstyles could not be more different. That discrepancy starts as soon as the match does with movement. Alternus is. Well, that down air man. Fox can recover from for quite a while though. Is generally the more aggressive player, but as anyone who has played Punch Out knows, just mashing at your opponents is not a strategy conducive to success. Bro, he just killed at 100%. I didn't know you can kill at 100% with that up B. Success. What he does is runs to the area right outside of his opponent's threat range, then darts around right outside of where he can't be hit, looking for an opening. Yeah, that's generally generally how you play, little Mac. That opening can come in a few ways. A whiffed move by the opponent, an obvious movement or attack choice leading to a hard read, or a mishandling yeah. of the pressure that Alternus creates, be that a bad jump or a panic shield. Now, bait and punish is a staple of Mac gameplay at every level, but Alternus creates those scenarios by forcing options and creating pressure scenarios that cause his opponents to crumble. Peanut on One thing I'm bad at is short hopping, guys. Not gonna lie. Short hopping is where I, I'm not the most proficient at. On the other hand, causes those interactions by making you want to throw your controller at him. Sorry. <laughs> Guys, I'd be raging. I'd be raging like that, I'm not gonna lie. Sorry, uh... If I go on a lost streak, I just lose it, man. I, I get so angry. Peanut causes those interactions by camping you. I know what you're thinking. How is that even possible? I know, legit. How do you camp with a, a character that doesn't have a projectile? Little Max certainly gets camped, but... How could a character with small hitboxes, no real aerials, and no projectiles camp you? Look at this clip of Peanut vs. Waluigi, an excellent snake player on the MDVA PR. 
Peanut starts slow and is at a slight percent disadvantage when he retreats to the right battlefield platform and waits. Peanut counters and waits for a committal option from Snake. He gets Those grenades get so annoying to deal with, man. Gets it when Waluigi fires in a I, n I haven't tried Snake in ranked yet. But I used to be a snake player in Brawl, so I don't know. I, I, I gotta get used to the grenade mechanic, but before you didn't have that, those grenades like that. Kita missile, and then in the chaos, Peanut has an opportunity to create platform pressure and close out the stock with a KO punch. Let's compare this to Alternus's set versus Unlucky, another good snake player. What's up with all the snake players, man? The stage choice, which will be talked about more later, is PS2, which has more open space for both characters Dang, bro. ...to be aggressive, and the lack of a top platform means that the game is going to be much more grounded and there's less space for either character to hop. As for some reason, we don't get this stage that much, uh, like... Like, whenever I play, uh, ranked games, bro, and I, I wonder why, bro. We don't get PS2, we don't get, um... That one, um... Animal Crossing stage, it's kind of sad, because they're played competitively, but we don't get them. I just get like Battlefield, but that's what I prefer, but the first that's what I put in my preferred rules, but still, I wish I could play on like Pokemon Talk Stadium. Is gone within 30 seconds because Alternus immediately corners his opponent, then makes some quick and simple reads and uses max frame data and armor to evaporate Snake as soon as he commits to an option. Both oh. situations involve the classic punch out, float, and sting, but Alternus is there to create pressure, force mistakes, and capitalize. Peanut is much more patient and much more true to the original punch out. Wait for your opponent to whiff, and then go bananas. Once either Mac gets a hit, they get to go into the little Mac dream state. Advantage. Watch this stock from Peanut against Schneigli, one of the best Bowsers in the region. After a solid edge trapping sequence by Peanut, he converts each of his tilts into follow-ups. Down tilt- I'm not- I'm not good at, like, combining tilts either on little Mac, guys. I'm good at using, uh, like... Uh, forward... Ground forward, what is it called? Forward to... Uh, tilt into F tilt, down tilt into... F tilt, up tilt, there we go. The side B twice, up tilt into a tech chase setup, and finally, up tilt into up B on the top platform to take the stock. Get out the game! All of these <laughs> are the optimal, guaranteed punishes for Peanut to go for in these situations. And, they're what he's grinded out playing Mac online for so long. Now, when we look at a stock from Alternus against the same player, he does the classic push your opponent into the corner that he does, then lands a down tilt, then, just like Peanut, he... Wait, what was that? A faster F tilt or side B would have connected, so why is he just leaving those open? Now Schneigly just jumped... Imagine they have turtles just that looked like a Bowser in real life, guys, with the spikes and everything. I don't think we really see those, but that would be a cool design. Not gonna lie. He's back and uses flame breath and is able. Like they would be pretty dangerous. Able to get his own advantage. They, they, should, uh, they should. They should. They should have that, man. I think that helped them. Advantage started. Hmm. This must have been a mistake, right? But here we are now, near the end of the stock, when Alternus lands a down angled F smash and chases Snigley into the corner. Hmm. But look, Snigley already showed his hand last time. When given an opportunity out of dis. Yeah, that 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 neutral B. Sorry guys, I watched a little bit of this earlier, but yeah, that neutral B is not good. Like it has a ton of end lag. Advantage. He wants to use fire to scare his opponents and keep them off of him with a big and long-lasting hitbox. Alternus knows this because of his previous conditioning and immense. Like don't do that when uh, you just get hit off the platform, because Mac is so quick on the ground, man. His game knowledge and swings through with an F smash to take the stock. From then on in the. Super armor, by the way. Set, Schneigly was slow to Which is a cool concept, I'm not gonna lie. It, it's annoying playing against it. K. Rool has, like, so many super armors, bro. Use Flame Breath because of the fear that Alternus created. Even after a switch to Terry in Game 2, he showed that same understanding of baits in order to keep up his constant pressure. He trusts his gun and makes hard reads on his opponents. And it works out much more often than not. It's that's why his tech chases are... But then he switched to Terry. It's like, what? What are you doing? You're supposed to be the little Mac guy. I don't know. <laughs> Terry's a... Guys, I don't know how to play Terry. I don't know how to play Ryu or Ken. Is that... Maybe... Maybe a little. I don't know. I had to learn the, those combos. You're so good and why you can never, ever count him out. And this is not to say that Peanut doesn't have sauce. 
This play from his set versus JoJ that was actually featured on the VGBC YouTube channel is one of the coolest things I've seen in a little while. It's just that he's much more surgical in his pressure, both in neutral and in advantage. Surgical? Like he's a doctor. Now, let's talk about some more niche aspects of their gameplay. First and foremost is stage choice. Peanut relies on platform movement as a part of his game plan. Before MDVA switched to a Makes sense. Stage list without Yoshi. Sometimes I do bad on platform, sometimes I do good. It's like, you know... Uh, athletes. Sometimes they do good, sometimes they do bad. They could say that about any Smash player. Story, Peanut could reliably force games to Battlefield, Yoshi's, or another stage where he could take full advantage. He loves triplats. Which is against the general logic of Mac hates platforms and he gets camped. As previously mentioned, there comes a point where Peanut's opponent realizes that they're the ones. Thankfully, his movement speed makes up for it, guys, because he would be, it'd be toast if it wasn't for it. Being camped, and they have to go chase after one of the game's fastest characters. Coupled with his excellent maneuvering around platforms and an eye for committal options, Battlefield rather surprisingly melds perfectly with Peanut's strengths as a player. He also has slowly but surely become one of the best platform tech chasers in MDVA. His plat locks with max weak aerials have some ridiculous setups, and even tech chasing options with an up smash or a jump to platform and smash attack are so deadly that as soon as Peanut hits you with any tilt above 80%, you're as good as dead. It can still- Basically. Tilt has super armor as well. It so. cause problems, especially when Peanut gets behind early against a character with good- Oh, with a dash attack. Mobility. But his ability to weave through platforms is as good as anyone's, and it shows in set after set against some of the best the region has to offer. It's worth noting, too, that against zoners, platforms give you more approach avenues, more places to land, and more places- uh, I am, I am still. ...just to hide from projectiles. So, Peanut's not alone in his lack of love for FD. Alternus yeah. mostly prefers to play on PS2, Town, or FD where there's nowhere to run and nowhere to hide. Alternus play- I gotta use that down smash at the platform more, man. Plays fast enough that he can force people into the corner, and it's harder for his opponent to make it out of the corner without the aid of the top platform. The wide stages give him- I've used that Little Mac in like three weeks. He's been using other characters, trying to learn them. ...him space to run around and bob and weave. Alternate- There's so many characters. This can also kill with a tilt around 80%, but it'll be a tech chase on the ground that does you in. Mac ain't no air fighter after all. Oh yeah, we all know that if you ever played that character. <laughs> the only place where either player has a definitive edge as Mac is in the skies. Alternus does a really good job of keeping his back to center stage, so it's rare that you have to see him do a difficult recovery. And he mainly goes for two frames at the ledge and has very solid ledge trapping. Peanut, however, became whatever the Smash Bros version of Famous is with terrifying aerial jab locks, slip counter edge guards, and seemingly impossible recoveries in Wi-Fi tournaments. Mikasa? Guys. He makes Little Max air game look, well, still bad, but- I didn't know that guy played in tournaments, but he does. At least viable and scary. Maybe, maybe it's a different name, but- Certainly something you have to look out for, lest you end up in one of many Twitter clips. Peanut is also G -G -G -G. fully aware of max limits. His airspeed, aerial up B tech options, and his lack of big hitboxes he can use to protect himself while recovering. Both of them are rarely edge guarded, as they don't jump too fast, they don't pay. I also don't really use counters as well, guys. I should use counters more. Uh, uh, I'm still working on my craft, guys. Like, but yeah, I just don't use counters that much at all. Panic off stage, and they don't use Little Mac's horrible air dodge unless they're right at the ledge. Lol, just back throw Mac off stage has never been a less effective strategy than it is against these two guys. It's also worth noting that while not wholly relevant, he said close range only. Oh my god. To a Little Mac analysis, that Alternus has a handful of secondaries. His squad strike team is strong and beat Ned at glitch 8.5. Terry don't know who that is. is his strongest and acts closer to a dual main, but his best character is still absolutely Mac. He also plays the pits and hero both to strong success. He plays Terry similarly to Mac, which is to say, kick ass first, ask questions later. He uses it to deal with matchups that just look ugly to watch for Mac like Luigi, Pac-Man, or Bowser. It definitely makes his option coverage better. That is Terry. 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 
Terry, Terry, like, I, I don't understand what Terry's saying, saying half the time, not gonna lie. And bracket luck is much less of a factor for exactly that reason. Finally, there's KO Punch. That beautiful ding-ding heard around the venue combines satisfaction and ding- Guys, it, it's so awesome that the restock someone is Mac, bro. <laughs> you get KO Punch, like, twice. If you do that. Even three times in one, one game. Or one stock. That's- Quite amazing. ...in a way that few natural phenomena can match. It's almost as if you can feel your character's ribs break when it lands as you watch your chances at a win evaporate just as fast. You'll never guess who- It's kind of hard to land it though, man. Because if they know you have it, they're going to be doing all they can. ...who's more aggressive with KO Punch. That's right. Alternus's pressure setups are absolutely buffed by having a frame 9 uppercut with super armor that can and will kill you at 30%. His down tilt setups and down angled F smash conditioning give Alternus a download on his opponent that- Or 10% on zone characters, I swear. ...that he cashes in on- Maybe, maybe not 10%, don't quote me on me that, but- ...time and time again. Something like that. ...off the Angel platform, I've personally seen him use down-angled F-Smash into KO Punch on Rollout and Roll In on Tekken Place or on Heavies. He's the guy you're going to see use raw KO Punch more often. And it hits a shocking amount of the time. Peanut, of course, uses these setups too, but as is customary for the kid, he's not going to run into your face to use it. If he has KO Punch and his opponent is above 65%, he's probably not going to use it on that stock at all. What you might at all realize what the about four or five games into playing friendlies with peanut is that he's not really using the ko punch to hit you with it he's using it to create fear when ko punch snap that's smart that's smart but if you get hit twice with a ko punch you can't use it anymore so is out you have to play around it because you know that no matter what you do if you mess up you, just you could have ko punch when he dash attacked right there just die but then again he just got the kill I Peanut realizes this. It makes you think just for that one extra moment about your option, and in that hesitation, that's where he finds an opening. You avoid the setups just to take 60% from an F-Smash conversion, then just when you think you can approach because he's not actually going to throw it out, he knocks- It's like two F-Smashes break shield, bro. Eight of your teeth out and kills you at 26%. Anecdotally, at least, Alternus hits more KO punches, but Peanut wins neutral more when KO punches out, and it's infuriatingly- I have none of the DLC characters, brothers. And I, I need to get them. ...difficult to say which one is better. Is Peanut getting too cute with it? Maybe. But a player that plays so atypically defensively, having such an interesting use of his character's best tool and the mind games that it creates is- There's a way you can, like, make his recovery a little more goaded as if he, like, down air in the middle of the- When you're, like, a- when you, right, at, right, right as soon as you get the second hop, when you're recovering on stage, you get like a, a more, your, 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 your a B goes like further, guys, if you're going sideways. So crushing. Should Alternus slow play his KO punch strategy more? Maybe, but the fear that Alternus creates comes from the aggressive playstyle that is the crux of his neutral and punish game. He's not the player that will stand around and wait for the opening. He's the guy that creates the opening. So, what does all of this mean? Who's the better player? I just want to see the cool runs I did at tournaments, man. What playstyle is better? So far, the two of Both of them. <laughs> I don't know. ...have played in five sets. All at locals, where Peanut is up three to two. But with low stakes and all of the sets... Well, there we go. That's the best Little Mac in the USA then, right, guys? ...seeing Alternus pull out secondaries. Alternus actually won both of his sets 2-0 with Donkey Kong a character that he insists he doesn't play. That's not a great barometer of who's better, especially since most high-level dittos aren't indicative of skill as much as matchup knowledge and who will flinch first. Let's look at how they fare versus the MDVA region's finest. Neither player was quite able to crack MDVA's top 20 during the first post-lockdown season, but both made it onto the end of year PR. As what am I watching? <laughs> Why is it a bunch of milk brands? Horizon Organic Milk is pretty good, though. Not gonna lie. Are at rank 19. Why, why, why they, why they put this as a, the ranking system, guys? Oh, that Fairlife Strawberry Milk looks good. For Alternus and rank 17 for Peanut. 
But as 2022 rolled in, Peanut focused more on going to majors and streaming. And even when he did go to locals, controller problems and a slump meant that he wasn't able to make it back onto the April version of the MDVA PR. Alternus, on the other hand, stepped up his game, farming the MDVA region with Terry, Pitt, and Mac, and finishing seventh in MDVA, and not bad, not bad. And was the fourth highest rated player from Virginia. I just like when they tell stories about their like insane tournament runs. That's my favorite part. A 12 spot. Like, you know, who they lose to or what what they did during a game. He might go into this. Rise from or during a tournament run, or rather. His last season and 10 spots higher than Peanut was ever able to make it. Maryland and Virginia decided to split up their PRs, and Peanut has had plenty of time to gain ground on his fellow Yellow Mac and terrorize Maryland along the way. During the summer season, Peanut finished 5th on this version of the Maryland Power Rankings, and Alternus finished 7th on the Virginia Rankings. So, this season... Peanut wins, right? Let's add up the score at the big boy tournaments. Thing for for a character that's supposedly in the worst five of them. Not bad, not bad. Finish fifth. Because yeah. Alternus rarely ever travels outside of MDVA, there have been six majors where both Max have. I don't know what MDVBA is, guys. Played. Glitch 8.5, SmashCon Fall Fest, Glitch Infinite, Pound 2022, SmashCon 2022, and Glitch Regen. The first was Glitch 8.5, which wasn't a banner tournament for either player. Peanut finished 65th, and Alternus finished 97th out of 421 entrants. Not bad, though. Which are respectable, albeit unspectacular, performances. Peanut went... Yeah, pretty much. 65th is decent. 97th, not that decent. 2-2, two and two, but astoundingly lost to Dark Wizzy and Charlie De King, who was sent into losers during pools by Bacon sending the bracket into shambles. Alternus won four set. He made his name Legume, which is like peanut in Spanish. <laughs> but did most of it through losers, and eventually fell 2-1 to one to Lavish, who went on to beat Cola at his next major. So, that's one- Cola? Is it an A-Cola? <laughs> one point for Peanut. Up next, we have a much more exciting story. SmashCon Fall Fest, which could be seen as both- Whoa! Okay, okay. Players Breakout Tournament. The 769, nice. Player bracket was chaotic, but both Peanut and Alternus rode the wave with one of the least consistent characters in the entire game. Alternus was white hot, beating Syro, Naito Sharp, and DM. He lost in 3,000 tournament well. us to the MK Leo Slayer Kurama and PGRU yeah, this guy is pretty cracked, man. He's been coming up huge. UV3 number 7 to Buzz to finish at 25th out of 769 total entrants. Peanut had a much less traditional run, and he had to crack off six straight set wins where he didn't drop a game to make top 48 after losing a round one pool's nail biter to Demento, a very strong Aegis player from Alabama. Peanut beat Rel Wood and Fancy, the players who eliminated that very strong. They used to be Miami back in the day. Strong. Aided Demento before finally falling to PGRU number 19, Yanni, at 33rd. So, Alternus returned serve on his home court in Virginia. That brings us to Glitch Infinite. Alternus was one frame away from the upset of the year, taking light to Game 3 after being 3-stocked in Game 1. He was literally one or two frames from connecting with KO Punch to take the set. Interestingly, he said that he had a read on light where light was narrowing out of his combos throughout the whole set, and he expected to see it on that last confirm, but light being light switched things up right when he needed to, jumped away, and broke the hearts of every low-tier hero watching. He Dang, bro. You always want to see a low-tiers win, right, guys? Ended up getting 65th with solid wins over Real Steel, McBanana, and Mage King, an impressive placing after being... Mage King's like a 51% win rate. That'll probably be m me. I'll, I'll probably be a lot less. I don't know. Seated 120. He plays hero. Seventh out of the 600 plus players in attendance. Peanut had no such luck. Again, getting a rough bracket where he got flattened by Jazo and Jackal to take 97. Flattened. So that's two to one for the Virginian. But up next we have Pound and spoiler alert, this one ends in a tie. Yes, we know that ties are the worst, and neither player was especially happy with how they played. Peanut lost to Legendary Villager, Kept, in a matchup that isn't as bad as you think and some players would consider Mac favored, as well as Ohio Joker main, Non, in a matchup that is, and... Hey, look at that win rate, though. That's pretty cracked. I can't stress this enough, just as bad as you'd think. 
He got a good win over Beef, the New England Sonic main, but still, it was another missed opportunity to get a point back, with Alternus getting a good win over Melon and losing to Icy Mist and Omart. That keeps the score at 2-1 for Alternus and brings us to the first and only major where Peanut and Alternus have finished more than one seed line away from each other. Alternus finished 100 yeah, that's a cool side B. Edge guard, not gonna lie. Oh, that was, that was, that was, that was awesome. Ninth with respectable losses to Sunido and ConCon. But he was able to pull off, yeah. off solid wins against Cam Steele. 129th, not bad. Steele, Rowe, and Kabi. Peanut had a friendlier bracket, matchup-wise, and that was all he needed to start making some upsets. He pulled off one of the most impressive upsets outside of Top 32, where he beat Jazo, who had previously cru oh, okay. crushed him back at Glitch. He then took out Capitan Sito to make top 128 on winner's side. Despite losing me, Gunner. to Mutace and Geist, his two big upset wins showed the world at large that this kid was for real. He finished in 65th place, and we're all tied up again. All in all, the number- And they always- It must be their overall ranking, right guys? They can't just keep getting 65th on a tournament, right? Maybe. Numbers didn't help. We here at PG Stats are left without significant statistics to determine a winner. What it comes down to is this. Alternus creates pressure situations to try and force mistakes. He's aggressive and pushes Max Kit to its limits to make his opponent uncomfortable and as soon as he smells the blood in the water, he pounces. He trusts his instincts and will live or die by the sword, but might lose to people who won't fall for the mind games he plays in advantage. He's like an F1 car with a howitzer. Dane, Dane, there's probably uh, people that have just studied how he played and were like, okay, I know how to counter against this guy. You know what I mean? <laughs> if you're if you're trying to become a you know the number one player in the world, I'm sure they've done it, right, guys? Sir Cannon taped onto the top that can kill you off of one neutral win. His wins against Puppe, Sharp, and ZD indicate that this is a strategy that can work at the top level. And the more opportunities Alternus gets against those top players, the more likely he'll be to finally cash in and make his opponents cash out. Peanut is different. He's slow, methodical, and optimal, with enough sauce to make it count when he finally strikes. Yeah, definitely gonna have a playstyle no matter what. Strikes. Peanut understands the limit of the character and almost always gets the guaranteed damage that he feels he deserves. If he gets a lead, he's nearly impossible to approach safely and his mind games in neutral make you hesitate just enough that if you get caught, you'll die. His playstyle is much more like a beautiful dance done by a serial killer. <laughs> he moves gracefully, making the tightest of conversions look like nothing, but he's patient, waiting for you to make one little mistake. A whiffed move? the slightest miscalculation, and the next thing you know, your stock has disappeared. But can he make that work against the top level of player? The ones that make very few mistakes and know their characters like they know family? Probably not. We'll no doubt find out soon, as he's on a meteoric rise committed to traveling and accepting all challengers. What do you think? All depends if he gets more wins, guys. I mean, he never really got a, a win. A tournament win. Who is the MDVA King of Mac, and whose style do you like better? Not like I did either, though. <laughs> Drop I don't play in your the explanation tournaments. down in the comments section below, and make sure you subscribe to PG Stats to keep up with all of the Smash action, be it Ultimate or Melee. All right, guys, that's our video. Thanks for watching. My name is Last. And Oops. Thanks for watching. Check out PG Stats in the description. Don't forget Peanut going last hit with MK Leo. Okay, okay. We're mentioning that they're almost both made it and upset on a top five player. I like these more regional breakdowns of character specialists. I, I just want to see. I don't know, sorry. I, I said it before, but. Peanut got 13th and Alter has got 17th at Glitch. Okay, okay. I didn't realize this video was uploaded so long ago. I thought it was only three months ago. Important to note that Peanut used a lot more grabs than the normal Mac to put more pressure on shielding against him. So we love these two. And just how varied the gameplay between them is for sure. Alright guys, check out check them out in the description. Um like, comment, subscribe, and do all my reactions live on Twitch, so maybe come through, say hi. Currently I'm not monetized, so any donations are appreciated. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.